Okay. I just stole the camera from Holden. Here's the deal. This is a legitimate plug. Hey guys, Matt from Metlane Fitness, good to see you. January 4th is coming, and if you are wanting to get into shape, if you're wanting to do something, I have launched a program called the 30 Day Full Body Group Challenge. If you want this shirt, if you wanna be a finisher, January 4th is gonna start. 30 days of behavior change to get you to where you wanna be with your health. It's in my about page, it's in any video description that you see, and any video that I post. 30 Day Full Body Group Challenge. If you're ready to make a change, let's do it in 2021. This is your year. My name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining us again for another video with the highly requested My Friend Watches Deadpool. The problem that we had was that Matt has actually already seen it or has already seen a lot of it. So we were like, well, we're never gonna be able to do Deadpool since he's seen it. But today we're gonna do a loophole and make Jenna the friend that has that is gonna watch it for the first time because Jenna has not seen it. Woo! Give me a little thumbs up. <laughs> Jen is also here. My girlfriend has, has actually not seen Deadpool either, so it'll be kind of a mix of my friend and my girlfriend watches for the first time. Get a little shot on her. Couldn't think about at all. Don't know what he looks like. Nope, nothing. Really looking forward to this one. Matt, you've seen parts of it. What all do you remember? Ryan Reynolds, first I wanna say, I think you're a great actor. I really do. There's, he's had some films that have been fantastic. Really loved Waiting and all that, but his comedy for me in this role didn't translate. It just didn't work. I forget if I even saw it all the way through, but what I saw, I did not like. I think uh, maybe watching it again, maybe watching it with us might enjoy it a little bit more. I agree with some of the criticism about Ryan Reynolds acting as far as like comedy goes. It hits for me, I really enjoy it. But I, I absolutely can see the valid criticism that he kind of plays the same character in every comedy movie he plays. I will defend him when he does stuff like dramas and he does movies like Selfless, stuff like that. He does have some depth as an actor, but his comedy roles are kind of similar. I'll agree with that. I love this. I think this is absolutely hilarious. I'm so glad we're gonna get to watch it finally all together. Jen, going into it, you say you don't know anything about it going in. Any thoughts initially? As opposed to The Mandalorian, you know, anything Star Wars, I know a little bit of a background, but with Deadpool, I don't know squat. Like, I could barely pick him out. Um, I don't know what his story is. I don't know anything. So I'm truly going into this completely blind but um, I definitely have an open mind, so we'll see. Jenna, as the friend in this episode that has not seen it, I know you said you saw like a 10 second clip or like little bits. What are you thinking going in? The 10 second clip that I saw before was him like looking in the camera and saying some like really cheesy line and it reminded me of The Office and I love Jim more than I loved that 10 second clip of Deadpool, so we'll see. Jeremy is doing some behind the scenes for this one. I think we've we've actually had long conversations about Deadpool and stuff. What are you thinking going in for, uh, for Jenna? Really, Matt, re-watching it. Uh, what do you think about it? I don't want to hype it up and say it's a great movie. It's just enjoyable. It's a, it's a good watch. I feel like today we've got a, a fun little two movies that we're going to be watching. I've probably seen De Deadpool a handful of times, four or five times, and every time I just I get a kick out of it. That said, a lot of references that are specific to the time it came out, so I'm curious yeah. if we're even going to remember half of the, the punchlines, but we'll see. Jen has said that she likes Kara from The Mandalorian, and I believe... Love. She, oh, she loves her. I believe she's the one of the main antagonists in this movie. Good choice. Pastor and I have talked endlessly about Deadpool, especially when it first came out, and the second one, which we'll get to eventually, probably shortly thereafter. Going into it, what do you think? This movie was so anticipated and waited for, they wanted to do Don't it. Hype it up. You Don't hype it up! You no. look fly no, 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 no. You look fly as hell right now, just saying. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, appreciate it. This movie's really good. The chick that plays Cara Dune, yeah. All about that. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching. I haven't seen this movie in probably three years. So I like how it just so happens, all these big movies, I don't watch them coming into this series, which is awesome. So yeah, I'm excited to see what everyone who hasn't seen it thinks. I wanna go ahead and get into it. I will say we've debated before if we wanna give you backstory or knowledge before going in. We've kind of flip-flopped on whether that's a good idea or not. I do wanna give you one piece of information here. Ryan Reynolds really wanted this movie to be made for a long time. He wanted it to be an R-rated comic book movie. This is set in the X-Men, loosely based in the X-Men universe, and they poke fun at it. There was some test footage that got leaked, which got a huge online response of like, yes, make it, which is why it got greenlit. They joke about who, who released that footage or not. Studio had no faith in this movie at all. Pretty much gave them free reign to do whatever. They thought it was gonna crumble. It ended up making more than Man of Steel, which was the Superman movie on a shoestring budget. R-rated superhero movies are typically a no-no. There are some exceptions like Blade, but typically we don't do that. So this movie, since it was so successful, beat Superman that came out shortly, I think around the same time, gave studios more faith. If we did not have Deadpool, we would not have had Logan. 
straight up. I am going in open-minded, you're right. Maybe maybe there will be a second glimpse for me. Seeing it all the way through, we yeah. shall see. And it's just, like Jeremy said, it's just entertaining. Let's just go in and have fun. That's what this movie really is, I think. Let's get into it, guys. Deadpool. It's a dope out. It is a dope costume, though. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of lonesome back here. Yeah. Well, oh. Dope in the pool. Dead. Why the fancy red suit, Mr. Pool? Oh, that's because it's Christmas Day, Dopender. And I'm after someone on my naughty list. I've never said this, but don't swallow. <laughs> Did I leave the stove on? Ugh. Gridlock has kept police from the scene. The assailant appears to be armed, dangerous, and wearing a red, red suit. suit. All I Okay, okay, that's rad as hell. Three, two, stupid! Worth it. <laughs> You're probably thinking, my boyfriend said this was a superhero movie, but that guy in the red suit just turned that other guy into a fucking kebab. And yeah, technically this is a murder. But <laughs> Vanessa. Wait, what's a nice place like you doing in a girl like this? It's time to put balls in holes. The limited edition Voltron Defender of the Universe ring Four for four. Your left leg is Thanksgiving, and your right leg is Christmas. Can I visit you between the holidays? There's something I've been meaning to ask you, but only because you haven't gotten around to asking me. Uh, you mean? I do. That's my line. Mm. Oh, the f oh my God! Wait, Mr. Wilson. Take your time to process this. It's important not to do anything rash. This form looks good. This is taking unsportsmanlike conduct to a whole new level. Looking good, Francis. Well rested. Like you've been pitching, not catching. How about now? You should thank me. Apparently I made you immortal. I'm actually quite jealous. I'm about to do to you what Limp Bizkit did to music in the late 90s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I want you to remember me. I want to remember us. I swear to God, I will find you in the next life, and I'm gonna boombox careless whisper outside your window. We can fight this. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, how can I help you? Besides luring children into a panic, <laughs> I understand you've recently been died. What if I told you we can cure your cancer? And what's more, give you abilities most men only dream of. That'll be a Mason nightmare. <laughs> I kidnapped his daughter. He just wasn't having it. <laughs> they made three of those movies. At some point, you have to wonder if he's just a bad parent. <laughs> <laughs> and you are. Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Negasonic Teenage. What the shit? That's the coolest name ever. Nobody's getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, your poor wife. All the dinosaurs feared the T-Rex. <laughs> Let us go talk to the professor. McAvoy or Stewart? These <laughs> timelines are so confusing. Those are the actors, James McAvoy and Patrick Stewart. Of what? That, 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 play professor. That, that play the professor. Yeah, right over. You ever see 127 hours? Nope. Spoiler alert. This place seems sanitary. My first request is warmer hands. Oh, and Jesus, a warmer table. What's up with the matches? Oral fixation? Or just a big Stallone fan? <laughs> <laughs> One thing that never survives this place is a sense of humor. We'll see about that. How tough can he be? With a name like Francis. He got Ajax from the dish soap. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't unlock your mutation, then well, nothing will. Did I say this was a love story? No. It's a horror movie. 
going to shut you in again, Wade. Not because I need to. Because I want to. What's my name? Wait, Vanessa loves you. She doesn't care what you low. Oh. oh. Do you like what you see? No. I'm gonna work through his crew until somebody gives up Francis, force him to fix this, then put a bullet in his skull and f the brain hole. The douchebag does think you're dead, right? Yeah. That's good. You should keep it that way. All you need now is a suit and a nickname, like Captain Deadpool. Bob to take you all to school with guns and knives. It's just confusing. Is it sexist to hit you? Is it is it more sexist to not hit you? I mean, the line gets real blurry. Uh, whoa, whoa, 41 confirmed kills. Now it's 89, about to be 90. Mr. Wilson? And we all know how this turned out. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> you weren't meant to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks on everything. Looks are everything. You ever heard David Beckham speak? It's like he mouth sex to can of helium. <laughs> Think Ryan Reynolds got this far on a superior acting method? Give it up for <laughs> Jeez! I've seen him everywhere now, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Someone out back asking for you. Something about an old boyfriend. You have Wade Wilson to thank for this. <laughs> it's about 116 kilos of cocaine buried somewhere in the apartment, right next to the cure for blindness. Good luck. Josh. <laughs> you guys going for a bite? Early bird special? Oh, like there's something wrong with eating before sundown or saving money. So, no, <laughs> you know that bad guy that you let go? He's got my girl. It's a big house. It's funny that I only ever see two of you. It's almost like the studio couldn't afford another X-Men. <laughs> Is that what it was? X go give it to you. Fuck way for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to you. Wayne Wilson! What's my name? Superhero landing. So you gonna do a superhero landing. Wait for it. <laughs> go get her, Tiger. Bob? <laughs> Oh my god, I haven't seen you since Jacksonville. DGI Friday. Friday. <laughs> Does he write you notes too? You're right, beautiful. Red really is my color. Wait. After all this, you can't fix me? It sounds even stupider when you say it. Like the kind of stupid who admits he can't do the one thing I'm keeping him alive for? What's my name? Who fucking cares? Wait! Four or five moments, that's all it takes. Over a lifetime, there are only four or five moments that really matter. The way we... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for not cowboying up sooner. It's been a rough couple of years. But maybe the guy under this mask, he ain't the same one that you remember. <laughs> <laughs> we will make an X-Men of you yet, Wait. And now, for the moment I've all been waiting for. You're still here. Oh, you're expecting a teaser for Deadpool 2. Well, we don't have that kind of money. You expecting Sam Jackson show up with an eye patch and a 
saucy little leather number, go, go. The sequel, we're gonna have cable. Just finished watching Deadpool. Really funny comedic movie. I enjoy it a lot. I want to start with Jeremy. Jeremy, going back into it, how did you feel? Before we started watching this, I had mentioned the fact that some of the pop culture references might seem a little dated. Then I remembered they were dated at the time that the movie came out, and they actually kind of play on that. I feel like it nails the character of Deadpool. And that's something that was really important to Ryan Reynolds, really important to fans. Deadpool's first appearance was like way back in X-Force in the early 90s. Very different version of the character. I think as he kind of evolved and, and changed to this more meta comedic character, I wasn't super aware with the, of that kind of time frame. But I really enjoy Ryan Reynolds. This is another Ryan Reynolds performance, but it also feels kind of like the role that he was meant to play. There's so many jokes in it that sometimes they land really well and then other of them are just kind of groan inducing but I think even that works pretty well I like the non-linear storytelling how it constantly ends up back on the top of that bridge you know and they'll go back and give a little bit more backstory and then we keep ending up back on the bridge it's just it's a good time I really like Marina Baccarin in it or Marina Baccarin in it I really like the guy who plays Francis the way they represented Colossus talking about getting the characters right like this really felt like Colossus I like the interplay between Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Deadpool so I enjoyed watching and I'm real eager to hear what the others thought about it. I agree. This is just such a fun movie for me. I I love all the little references, the jokes, the type of humor. Like you said, I think Ryan Reynolds was really made for this role. It's like all those other movies, like waiting and comedies were just leading up for, for him to be able to be Deadpool. Pastor, big Deadpool fan. We've seen it many times together. How, how did you feel watching it again? Great time. As fun as the first time I watched it. Obviously, I didn't laugh as hard because I knew that some of the jokes were coming. The character of Deadpool was a lot deeper than I originally expected. I know that, as Jeremy said, there was a kind of a shift between New Mutants and when he got it when he was an X-Factor or X-Force and all his other um, when he got his own comic line and stuff his character kind of evolved a little bit going into it I thought it was just going to be this like you know parade of just pop culture references and just really cheesy jokes which there were both but it also had a deeper plot that I was not expecting uh, they did a really good job as Jeremy said about bouncing back with flashbacks so that you were never confused when he goes into the bar and he has still has his hair he's not like messed up in the face you know that it was before the whatever the accident or whatever because it, it could have been confused confusing if that element of his design wasn't present because you'd have been like is this before he got his powers or after so I thought that worked really well the music choices it was all over the place the soundtrack is probably you know like different decades different genres so I mean and it worked I really like the humble side when he goes into the chamber for the second time and Francis is pretty much telling him listen you know I'm doing this just because I want to the look on his face it, it, it really highlighted the humor and the, the the fact that he wasn't a humble guy and in that five seconds, he was the most humble guy that I've ever seen, you know, in a movie. It just worked for me that way. I came to the conclusion that Deadpool is definitely Marvel's uh, version of Spawn. Uh, in a lot of ways. He looked, reminded me a lot of Al Simmons walking around, not in the Deadpool outfit. The fact that he pretty much was having a relatively good life and then all of a sudden it just turned sideways, his military background, all of that just works. And I think it's very easy to take all these characters like The Thing and The Hulk and get it lost. And Deadpool gives you everything that you want from a character like Spawn, but it's, it's very his own character very much. So I enjoyed that a lot. I'm actually looking forward to the second one because I haven't seen that. I've only seen it like once, so. So Jen, this was your first exposure to Deadpool at all, not knowing anything about the character going in. What did you think watching it, just totally not knowing what to expect? I very much enjoyed it. Number one thing, I love the humor, the, the jokes, the sarcastic comments. And I like that it was a little bit different tone from the other superhero movies. I liked a lot of the minor co-stars, like the taxi driver, and I loved, I guess her name is Angel in this movie, but I know her from The Mandalorian, and I really, really love her character, so I was very happy to see her. Not rooting for the bad guys, but uh, she was one of my favorites. I enjoyed it. I'm excited to see the second movie. Again, I'm a little hesitant because usually I'll find the first movie very, very enjoyable, and then the second one be as good. It'll be good to see kind of where it goes, but um, this was a very different tone for me as far as superhero goes. He does his own thing, he does it in a very different way as far as from what I've seen for the other superheroes. So I really, really enjoyed it a lot. And uh, Jenna, what about you? Did you enjoy it aside from the 10 second clips you watch and weren't really impressed? 
Was it worth a watch for you? I made some notes. It was kind of a strange, uh, like they made a very strong point at the beginning that he was not a superhero, but then there was uh, Francis. So really like who, he was still the good guy in the movie. Otherwise there's just two levels of bad guys, which is different from most like superhero movies. Um, it seemed very much like the rest of the movies as far as like, very clean and then it just was like vulgar for the sake of being vulgar i guess to get the r rating i don't know like those seem to be like it's very normal and then like language just for the language sake or something i don't know it just it was a weird mixture that i it wasn't that i disliked it it was just different it was very ryan reynolds as far as his weird comedy um, he seems like a really good fit. It didn't knock it out of the park for me. I love the adult references. The young audience probably didn't get most of those references from Wham and, and all of that, which I thought was funny. And also, just one nitpick, because I'm taking Matt's place in, in this uh, video today, oh I guess. God, here we go. Um, <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? Matt from Metal Fitness. <laughs> Vanessa isn't superhuman, so how did she survive that fall from the ship? She was just fine. She had no injury. She had the little cut on her head from before, and that was it. It was the outfit. The outfit, okay. That's all, that was my only nitpick. It was it was okay, it was much better than the 10 second clip that I had seen before that I hated. And Matt, you had said that you had seen a lot of it, weren't impressed, didn't like it at all. Any of that changed this time around watching with us? Yes and no. I found some points that I definitely wasn't aware of before, and then I found some points that I wasn't aware of before that I didn't like. So it went both ways. I like it a little better, yes. The opening interstate scene, uh, the pistol shooting the grenade, that was that was dope. I actually got goosebumps from that for some weird reason. Like Jeremy said, like Jenna said, some of the humor just didn't land. Uh, I can give specific examples in that one part where he's mid-flight on the interstate scene. He said, did I forget to turn the stove off? You Not even that. close. Didn't, I just, ugh. Shit spackled muffle fart. Just a uh, bunch of fists, just like your Saturday night. It's just, mm, and it's so Ryan Reynolds. Uh, uh, again, in some movies, he's awesome with it, but sometimes it just sucks. There was a bygone gym moment, and yes, I'm gonna be that douchebag that takes that moment that was obviously comical and and grasp that, you know, that four or five seconds that he was talking about. Four or five sec, four or five seconds. Four or five, four or five moments. moments. Four or five moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's like, I'll look out for those the next four moments. So there's only four or five moments in your life? Yeah. He's saying well, he's big. Is uh -huh. that better than four or five seconds? Or yeah, because you have that four or five seconds to make that decision. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I like that better. So. You can't make your own bygone gym moment. Yes, yes I can. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> so I really liked in the beginning when they comically talked about their traumatic pasts in the way that made it di digestible. Not to make light about rape or anything like that, but they did it in a really good way that made you feel like, it made you feel better about it. Like it was more of an acceptance. And I think that there's something there about the perspective shift. I love that so much. The ending was long as hell. That last scene, it was just, it drug out and drug out and drag out. Wham was in it and it was just, you know, Optimistically, I'll give it a 6.8, and I definitely would not have given it that beforehand the first time I watched it, pieces of it. I think that I give it a higher rating because now I'm more of a mature audience. I really am. You enjoyed this better than Logan, is what you're telling me. Yeah, yep. What do you ratings then? Pastor, what about you? you? What would you rate this? From a movie point, I think it was a good movie. The pacing was good, the camera angles and all that stuff that we always talk about. Uh, I would give it like something like an eight. As far as fan service, a little higher than that because it was, there was so much writing on it. Nobody had faith in it except for the fans. And for that reason, I give it a really hard nine uh, just because it wasn't perfect, but it definitely delivered in what I expected and what, like Holden said, we would have never gotten Logan if it wasn't for this. So this movie has a lot, right? And I think it's going to be talked about in film classes and stuff for that reason. For me, I would rate this uh, probably about a seven. I, I like it, it's good. Seven's a good rating, I think. Um, it's entertaining. Uh, there's a lot I like about it. Some, like, kind of like what uh, Matt said, some of the jokes are hit or miss. When they hit, they're pretty freaking funny to me. I, th you know, I, I found myself laughing pretty hard at a lot of them. But for me, it's a good, solid movie. I feel like it warranted a sequel, but it's not. It's nothing that I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. It's something I enjoy. I will see if they continue making them, which I'm pretty sure they will. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, to your point, I think there's a lot of 
value behind the scenes to what this movie did. I, I think, like both you and Pastor said, like Logan doesn't happen without Deadpool. I swear, there's a there's a football movie where Al Pacino. I think is it Friday Night Lights? No. The whole like the thing at the end that's like the four moments or whatever. Anyways, uh, maybe I'm crazy, but no, I, I swear. Know what you're talking about. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen uh, what you're talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, leave it in the comment section. Um, I, I'm on the same page as Holden. Similarly, like I do like how they balance the romance in the comedy. It has a tone like a romantic comedy, like it never gets to those elevated emotional moments, but it's like sweet and enjoyable throughout. I also agree with what Jenna said about kind of like it being a very traditional story told with a lot of extra edge in it. I think I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a little bit higher than Holden and give it a seven and a half out of 10. And Jen, what about you? I, I don't know if it's because I'm just now being introduced to the kind of, all the superheroes and X-Men and everything like that, but I very much enjoyed it. I, I agree with Matt. There were certain points where it was kind of long, farther than it should have, but I, I liked it. I liked the humor. I liked the minor co-stars. I would have to say an eight. And lastly, I, rem I remembered any given Sunday. That's the one. The last three, the three minutes of your professional career, or something like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Leave that in, Mateo. Thank you, Jenna. What about you, as the friend in this episode? I like that it didn't take itself too seriously. I like the Hugh Jackman references with the magazine and the mask, and that they reference that they couldn't afford more than two. X-Men, which was pretty funny. Uh, so I'll give it a seven. Positive all around, that's good. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. Helps my channel out a lot. Comment down below, letting us know what you think of all of our opinions. Make sure to check out Pastor Jeremy and Matt's channels. Links will be in the description below. Consider joining me on Patreon. It's a great way to get early access to select videos like this one. As always, we appreciate you watching. Merry Christmas. Have a good one, everyone. Take care.